And a warm welcome for a brand new week of TNT. Great to have you with us. And uh, just acknowledging that today will be the funeral for Queen Elizabeth II. Now, it'll be held at 5 p.m. Thai time. That's 11 a.m. Monday at London time. I understand that there are quite a few gatherings being set up around Thailand for those people that would like to get together to, uh, to commemorate the memory of the great sovereign of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. So just a couple of messages I also want to acknowledge. Firstly, from Matt Lawson, who says, love your channel. One request, can you please put the rowing oars in a closet? They seem to be oddly placed. Uh, I spend 50% of the time watching your videos focusing on the rowing oars. Uh, they are purely ornamental. <clears throat> Uh, I, I'm not going to move the oars. They are just ornamental. And uh, are they peculiarly placed? I suppose they are. They're just filling in a bit of a black, a, a white gap that I didn't know what else to put there. Uh, also, uh, a thing that I needed to clear up, and where are we? Tim, you're giving out false information, says Jimmy Redcab, uh, regarding the UK banknotes. This is a comment I made on uh, Sat a Saturday's live program, uh, which, which I got wrong. On the 30th of September, the old paper versions, this is of the pound, will cease to be legal tender. I think they're 20s and 50 pound notes. The new polymer versions will carry on being used until a decision is reached regarding issuing new design featuring King Charles III. This could be a few years down the line. So thank you, Jimmy Redcab and many other people who uh, picked me up on that. I got the information wrong. I... Uh, didn't quite understand how the pounds work in the UK and that there are still two paper notes circulating and they're the ones that are being taken out of circulation by the 30th of September. So people coming to Thailand uh, with any of the polymer versions, you'll be able to exchange those into Thai baht, no matter who is uh, the head of on those uh, particular notes. Okay, into today's program. Uh, oh, actually, I should acknowledge first that we have um, a new sponsor just for this week, uh, Caps, Caps Sandwiches down there in Katu. I'll speak a bit more about them later, but thank you very much for joining in with the program this week. And if you do want a magnificent fresh sandwich, you can pop down to their new store there in Katu. You can also order online. Now, if you're out of the country or you're in Bangkok or Chiang Mai, then I'm sorry, uh, you're going to have to wait a little while to get your order sent to you. So primarily for people in Phuket, if you're looking for a fine sandwich, Caps sandwiches we also have of course five star marine with us as a sponsor for the week to our first story today and from the bangkok post the government revokes contracts with nine private hospitals over fraudulent claims and the story says that uh, the national health security office has decided to revoke contracts with nine private hospitals in bangkok because they allegedly filed false claims for reimbursement under the Universal Health Care Scheme. And there is a list of the nine hospitals at the top of the page. Uh, I won't attempt those because I'll get them wrong and you'll laugh at me. Uh, but we go further down the page and it says that uh, the NHSO board and the subcommittee is going to file a police complaint against the nine hospitals to revoke their contracts and recall the money which has been paid to them. The resolution was made after a fact-finding committee found solid evidence that the hospitals had made false requests for reimbursements for the costs of comprehensive metabolic panel tests. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but clearly the board is going to be seeking a reimbursement for those hospitals and uh, well, cutting off their contracts in the future. To our next story... And this from The Nation and uh, Taxon's daughter greeted by cries of welcome. So this is Patong Tan Shinawat. She's the youngest daughter of Taxon Shinawat, a former Prime Minister of Thailand who's currently living in exile. And he was elected twice uh, to be the Prime Minister of Thailand 
quite a polarising character, but still quite a strong force in Thai politics. Let's see what this story says. Patong Tan Shinawat, the youngest daughter of former Prime Minister Taksin Shinawat, was in Roy Et on Sunday to campaign for Per Thai in a local election. Roy Et is uh, right up there in the, the Isan region, uh, getting close to the Mekong River and the Lao border. Uh, the article says that Patong Tan was greeted by a crowd of red-shirted supporters who shouted, Welcome Prime Minister, while handling her, handing her roses and garlands. And it says a bit further down, Patong Tan is expected to be Per Thai's prime ministerial candidate for the upcoming general election, which must be called in the next six months. So there's a few questions to be asked about uh, this particular candidate. She's obviously very young. She does have the Shinawat name, but she's very green when it comes to politics. And while she's been serving in a sort of a PR capacity and as a patron, I suppose you could say, for the Per Thai Party, which is probably the largest support party in Thai politics. It's going to be interesting to see if they put her up uh, as a prime ministerial candidate. She'd be very popular, but she'd also be very green. And the question would then be how many puppet strings are being pulled if she were to be elected the, uh, the premier of the country. A lot of people fearing that Tax and Shinawat would actually be running the country in a sort of a de facto role. Anyway, that is a story from The Nation over the weekend. And you're watching TNT on a Monday. And uh, this next story is published by the South China Morning Post. Now, because it's got the word China in it, a lot of people are going to jump to conclusions. The South China Morning Post used to be a Murdoch paper, currently owned by Alibaba, who I acknowledge is a big Chinese e-commerce company. But they have been quite critical of the Chinese government and quite even-handed, I believe, over their coverage of COVID. This story also, which is about a report from The Lancet last week, has also been reported widely around the world And I just uh, grabbed this particular story because one, well, it's a local regional version of the story. And also, I think it's uh, quite uh, well written. So this is why I'm leaning towards this one. So it says, step up hunt for origins of COVID-19. A Lancet panel urges the coronavirus may have been natural or engineered, but more investigation needed from this from the commission. Global monitoring of virus gain of function studies also lacking. So the report from the Lancet has covered uh, really its view of the, uh, the the rollout of ways of mitigating COVID-19 around the world. It's critical of the World Health Organization. It's critical of governments. It's critical of the lack of coordination between governments and NGOs to try and uh, will battle COVID-19. So it's quite an important report, this Lancet report. There is a link in the description of this video. Now just going to some of the commentary, they're saying that the pathogen could have either spilled over from nature or an infection from a laboratory worker. So the report doesn't come to any conclusions. It's basically calling for more investigation, but it's leaving the door open for being either a natural occurring coronavirus or whether it could have spilled out from some sort of laboratory experiment. Further down, the commission could not rule out it could have passed to humans during laboratory research in Wuhan, the Chinese city where the virus was first detected, or elsewhere. In the next paragraph, even if it was a laboratory leak, it could well be a natural virus or a bioengineered virus. The report says adding investigation and better monitoring of such research was needed. Uh, this is an important paragraph from the report. Because beta coronavirus related to SARS-CoV-2 are found across East Asia, the search for a natural source of SARS-CoV-2 could con- should continue with high focus and intensity as the eventual discovery of a natural reservoir of the virus might occur only after years of searching and quite possibly outside of China. And the commission was convened by the medical journal The Lancet and took two years to compile input from more than 170 scientists and researchers. Its final report was released last Wednesday after a series of preliminary reports. 
Uh, this particular page has got a lot of interesting facts and quotes from the report. Independent researchers have not yet investigated the US laboratories engaged in the laboratory manipulation of SARS-CoV-like viruses, nor have they investigated the details of the laboratory research that had been underway in Wuhan. Third paragraph, China has strongly rejected the laboratory leak theory and sought to point the finger at the US and its researchers. The Lancet report said all theories should be considered and independently researched. And down the bottom there, many scientists have warned of the increasing risks of under-supervised and under-regulated genetic manipulation of SARS-CoV-like viruses and other potential pandemic pathogens. And uh, the Lancet report also said the suppression strategy adopted by many Asian and Pacific countries, including China, had been useful in lowering the number of deaths. And uh, two other comments there. The authors did not directly say whether China should continue to hold on to its zero COVID strategy, noting that two Chinese experts uh, are also among the authors of the report. So I think that's an important report. It's uh, taken two years to compile, and it really is the first, I suppose, overview of the way the pandemic has been handled or perhaps mishandled by a number of uh, different organisations and governments around the world. Because there's nothing surer. This will happen again. The question is, will we make the same mistakes? And there's been many mistakes Or will we perhaps learn from the COVID-19 experience and handle things better in the future? So I'd urge you to have a read of that report, which is uh, in the, the description of this video, if you get some time. You're on the TNT Monday program, and we're just using the camera from the laptop at the moment. I'm sort of travelling light over this week. I'll be back in Bangkok from uh, from this afternoon, so I uh, hope you can put up with the camera, which, as somebody has kindly noted, shows my wrinkles. Uh, so this story from Andrew McGregor Marshall. Now, this is a, a Facebook page. He's a well-known critic of the Thai royal family, well, vehemently so, I think you could say. But he's noted that nobody from the Thai royal family will be at the funeral of Queen Elizabeth, a surprising and significant absence, noting that the Queen and the uh, King of Thailand, the former King of Thailand, did meet a number of times during some official visits and uh, seem to enjoy each other's company, so perhaps unusual that no members of the Thai royal family are attending the funeral today of Queen Elizabeth II. To the next story, three suspects from Hong Kong and China wanted for human trafficking into prostitution, leading to a Kyrgyzstani woman's suicide in Pattaya last Friday. And uh, three Chinese and Hong Kong suspects were wanted by Pattaya police for reportedly tricking a Kyrgyzstani woman to become a prostitute, causing the victim to commit suicide. Apparently, these people have been caught, but we'll just go into some of the details. The suspects were two Chinese women and a Hong Kong man. The male suspect was reportedly responsible for picking up the victim at Sawanapum Airport and taking her to work at a call centre business in Laos, but she couldn't do it for some reasons. Uh, Then she ended up working in Chombury for two months before eventually managing to escape and seeking help from a German friend. However, overwhelmed with desperation, she decided to commit suicide last Friday. And uh, there's the names of the suspects who uh, are currently being sought. The first suspect was captured on the same day at a condominium in uh, Bangkok, along with a number of properties in dispute, including passport, cash, credit cards and seven mobile phones. So uh, commiserations to that woman's family. Uh, These situations come up from time to time. We need to be aware of them and hope that police continue to suppress these sort of activities. To our next story, and uh, also from the Bangkok Post today, fallout from an economic war. Thailand cannot avoid an impact from the tussle between Europe and the US against Russia over the latter's invasion of Ukraine. Uh, noting that the Thai customs cleared exports have continued to expand for a 17th consecutive month, but the growth rate slowed to 4.3% year on year. 
And the second paragraph there, the slower pace of export growth in July was mainly attributed to a decrease in fruit shipments, a semiconductor shortage that affected production, and lockdown measures in some major Chinese cities that interrupted production and lengthened delivery time. And an economist at the Bangkok Bank is predicting a new chapter in the global economic war and uh, saying that G7 finance ministers agreed on September 2 to impose a price cap initiative on Russian oil aimed at limiting the Kremlin's funding of its war. And uh, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, responded by threatening to cut off energy supplies if price caps are imposed on his country's oil and gas exports. The commentary continues, though this economic war may be taking place in Europe, it could have a major impact on Thailand. The conflict could cause demand and supply changes for products in the global market, which would eventually affect Thai export, of course. And energy prices down the bottom there, which have soared since the Russia-Ukraine war broke out, will also continue to cause financial problems for manufacturers, manufacturers and households. Of course, no matter how far this war is happening away from Thailand, the impact and the fallout will eventually affect uh, Thailand and Southeast Asia generally. To our next story, and we've got another missing person, and this covered in a lot of different uh, media over the last day or so. Uh, This one from ASEAN Now, which says, Missing British tourist Daniel Lee McCarthy, also known as Dan or Dan Mac, disappeared since last Tuesday. His last seen confirmed sighting at a business meeting on Soi Chaipun. After that, he was supposed to catch his plane on Wednesday to the UK, but he checked out of the hotel, left his luggage there while he waited for the taxi. The taxi arrived, but only his luggage was at the hotel. And a description down there, Daniel's six foot one, stocky build, weighs about 15 stone nine. He has uh, dark hair, currently shaved with a beard. He's an Everton supporter. There's a photo of him. And if you do know anything about this gentleman, there's an email, barry underscore mccarthy at hotmail.co.uk if you have any information. So another missing person. Glad to report that the German person who was missing last week was discovered to have crossed into Laos and uh, has been identified and found and he's safe and well. To this story, an opinion piece printed in Kalsod English by one of the finest writers in the English language in Thailand, uh, Prawit Rotanapruk. And he says that uh, the future of the de facto use of marijuana for recreational purposes, a byproduct of the decriminalization of marijuana for medical purposes, is now hanging in the balance. And further down, this means that there's a real possibility that the draft marijuana bill will now be deferred until the general election. All this while there's a legal vacuum where the use of marijuana for recreational purposes is spreading since the government since the government decriminalised it back in June. Well, it's perplexing on the surface, he says, but one explanation could be that Thai politicians are mostly driven by pragmatism, not by ideology. He says that many Thai politicians, times and again, have proven themselves uh, able to work and serve with whoever is in power, though a coup or election, it doesn't matter to them really as long as they can have a share of the cake and hold a cabinet post. And just noting further down in that article, most foreign expats also swear Anderton is the man because he's had at least, at the time of writing, managed to make smoking pot legal, the first in Asia. It's all too bad they cannot vote for the man, but Anderton and the debate about whether to allow Bangkok and the rest of Thailand to be like Amsterdam or not will definitely be a contentious topic in the upcoming election. This is an important point because we do have an election coming up, probably be held sometime early next year, has to be held or called before March the 23rd next year. If they leave it to the very, very latest, that probably means the election itself will be in April or May next year at the very latest. But isn't it astonishing that the subject of uh, marijuana, its decriminalisation, Uh, whether it can be for recreational use or just cultivation and use for other means, 
could be the main topic or one of the big topics for next year's Thai election. Interesting times indeed. And just a big thank you to our sponsor for this week. We've got Caps Sandwiches. There's a picture of their shop uh, there in Katsu. I think he just raced out and took that one when he sent me the directions to find them last week. But, oh, there's one of their magnificent sandwiches, and these are beautiful, fresh sandwiches. Now, here's the thing. If you go in and you say, Sawadi Cap, get it? then they'll give you a 10% discount on any of your orders. Now, you can also order through Food Panda and uh, Grab if you want to stay at home and get one of their fine sandwiches, but they are in Katu in Phuket. And not forgetting, of course, Five Star Marine and their private tours. If you want to head out for a private tour of up to, what, 30 islands or so around Phuket, Five Star Marine, there's a link in the description of today's video as well. And with that, we thank you very much for joining us on our Monday TNT. And uh, from the entire staff and empire of TNT, basically me and the cats and an iPad, I thank you very much for joining us and uh, hope to see you again tomorrow.